Welcome to T-Set Pass, a classy Yu-Gi-Oh! podcast where we just have various different guests on, maybe they're casual, maybe they're competitive, and we just have some nice chats about the game that we all love. I am sorry that we've taken a month off for illnesses, uh, various different things coming on in my real life, my work life, my personal life. I have not had the time to organize these events, and I didn't have the energy to just do bad episodes for you just to fill the gap. I thought I'd wait until I have a spare minute. We can change up the format a little bit, make it a bit nicer, and hopefully the uh, the pause will be appreciated when you see the high quality uh, conversations that we're going to be having. Today we've got Golden Nova Yu-Gi-Oh! He's back again, ready to give his expertise on the law, and he'll be playing my brand new segment T-Set Pass, along with some rapid fire questions that I plan on giving to all our guests moving forward. Let me know in the comments who you want me to invite onto the podcast, what you would like me to ask them, and I want you to have a guess at today's T-Set Pass. So I have put a monster face down in the monster zone, and I have put something face down in the spell and trap zone. I will give you a hint for you, the viewers at home. For the guests, they will get the hint and they will get three yes no questions. So it could be is it a dark type monster? And I might say yes or no. And they can use that to guess what they want. They will get two guesses of the monster and two guesses of the spell trap. However, you at home, you get one guess in the comments. I want to see if anybody can guess it right. I have already asked the Discord and they have given their thoughts. If you want to have a go at guessing with me live on the Discord, please join the link is in the description below. Until next time, I want to wish you well. I hope you enjoy today's conversation with Golden Nova. He's a lovely man and it's always nice to have him back on the show and let me know who you want me to get next time. Until then, have a lovely day and I hope you enjoy today's episode of T-Set Pass. Um, So, you know, I do want to just have a chat. I do want to have a a chat about life, but I do have a few little bits, a few little tweaks that I may have introduced since series uh, one that I have primed you for already one of them uh, but I'd like to start before that with some rapid fire Yu-Gi-Oh questions this is when I think of some some amazing sting like, doo, 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 like, like the weakest link I'm just thinking of that <laughs> the lights come down <laughs> golden nova you are the weakest link and I'll need you to answer some rapid fire questions or you will be ejected from the podcast immediately it really is just like the Doctor Who episode. <laughs> oh, I'm glad that you were thinking of the Doctor Who episode, because so was I. I would much rather think of that than the actual program. Yeah. Oh. My partner is huge on it. I'm not, like, a huge fan, but I've enjoyed what I watched, and we did, like, a rewatch of, like, early Doctor Who, so that's, like, in my brain now. I would be fascinated to see an American's opinion of that particular episode in this particular year, because it is so British. And not only so, is it so British, it's so 2005 Britain. It was like Big Brother. I know, I know Big Brother is like big globally, but like it was big. It was like all-consuming. It's like it's like the Love Island of now. I guess that's maybe a bit British for now. But the culture. It's like Big uh, Big Brother, Weakest Link, and they did another one. They did like a makeover show as well for Jack. I was like that is that is TV now. That is Britain in 2005 encapsulated to a T. And I have no idea if it translates in any conceivable way. <laughs> See, the Big Brother one made sense, but I was under the impression that was the show aping an American style of like uh, a reality TV show. I didn't know that was a global phenomenon. Now, I don't know where it started, because a lot of the stuff that I feel started in England actually started in, like, Germany, and we just bought it from Germany, and then it goes from Britain to Australia, and then it goes from Australia to America. So, like, I lose track of where things start. Like, um, The Traitors. Have you seen The Traitors? I don't know if you No, I don't think I've heard of that. So good. It feels very British, but I think it started in Holland, then we sold it to America, and now it's in Australia. But anyway, so it's, it's all over the place. It's a new big brother. <laughs> um, but yes, some rapid-fire Yu-Gi-Oh questions. I want you to go as quick as you can, but feel free to answer as in-depth as you like. Sounds good. I'm I'm in position. I'm ready to go. Question one. What got you into Yu-Gi-Oh? Uh, early starter decks and the anime. Mm, good, good answer. What was your first real deck? Now I'm moving, I'm giving you a loose interpretation. You can define what you feel to be a real deck, but I would I would say not a pile of all the cards you own. Not a yep. bad pile of all the cards you own. Something sembling something that you could play, even if you probably wouldn't play it today. 
yeah, the first time I had a deck that wasn't just the most uh, the most c competent stuff out of my bulk was Cloudians. Cloudians. I Beautiful. loved making a single Nimbus Man and being all like, and then I'll put more fog counters on it. So this isn't just I'll like more. pile of Cloudians. Um, I love I have the I uh, I have the Typhoon. This is like Nimbus Man big boy Cloudians. Oh, I hated Eye of the Typhoon. That card was garbage. Now Nimbus Man, that guy gets up to like 30,000 for sneezing on it. Nimbus Man is the guy that she told you not to worry about. Eye of the Typhoon's <laughs> over there just... She loves me, right? I'm big, I'm bulky, but Nimbus Man, he just he got something different to him. He's got an effect. He's got a real He's got a real effect. Brilliant. She's like, it's okay, babe. You don't have to do anything with fog counters. You Meanwhile. Got, you got nothing to worry about, babe. I, you switch everything from... Uh, everything's battle position. You got so much going for you. The fog counters. Uh, that's, that's something. <laughs> What's your favorite card? Uh, favorite card, Dante, Travel to the Burning Abyss. Do you have what print do you have of it? If you uh, original uh, Duelist Alliance First Ed. Very nice. It, did you find it so funny that it got reprinted for no reason in the Battle of <laughs> Legend Monstrous Revenge? <laughs> Yeah, it's it's wild that they'll just put Dante in anything, but he's just that good. It's true. I, I, I'm not even angry. I love Dante. I, BA was probably the first competitive deck I built, and it's just it was just surprising. I was like, why is he here? Is this for Farfa and nobody else? Like, did he need a favor? Is he run out of copies? Um, it's all good. I, I'm saving the set right now. Saving the set right now. Favorite Yu-Gi-Oh anime, if you have one. Uh, Arc V. Arc V. Do you like it despite everything that goes? Will wonky in the middle. I'd say the pacing suffers a little bit. How how did you find your time going from beginning to end? Um, I think it's I think it's just fine. Uh, I've I haven't had like a high bar when it comes to the storytelling of of Yu-Gi-Oh. So that might just be me having a lack of a critical lens. I just like Yuya so much. I love that little theater kid. As someone who's just covered the Bell Star lore, tell me all about it. This these sinful spoils. I know nothing about her, other than, I assume, the name is the same origin as Bael Starmon from Digimon, which is the old cowboy, uh, is it cowboy? Uh, there are some kind of thiefy, uh, do, do, uh, not, not do-gooder, not evil-doer. Uh, why is evil-doer first and then do-gooder after? Anyway, um, what's her deal? Do you think they are the new Albaz? Are they the new big thing? Or do you think this is more of a flash in the pan? Um, I think we are in line for a lot of DBL Star lore stuff. Um, because they pulled the thing that they did with Visus, where they made a card that's tied into the lore a whole set before they even introduced the actual thing. Uh, this time around, we had the uh, uh, Sinful Spoil of Rebellion or something. The Snake Eyes uh, that takes an opponent's card and puts it into the Spell Trap. Uh, technically either player, which is okay. funny, uh, but yeah, it does put it in their owner spell and trap zone. Um, and then that ended up being a whole archetype, uh, whereas Visas had that clear new world card that like pops something, gets your replacement out of the deck, and then that just became a name to search target for Vita for some reason. <laughs> yeah. So, we got the Sinful Spoils Rebellion, and that is just a simple kind of removal card. And now we're getting a lot of uh, Sinful Spores cards and a lot of Bell Star cards, and I've briefly looked over them, and they look nothing alike in terms of design mechanics. Like they have lots of effects. They have a banish effect in the grave. They are much more like the Visas cards or the uh, or the later Albaz cards. Why do you think that we got this one tiny removal card and then a whole heck of an archetype? What makes you think it's going to be the next big thing in terms of the design of them, and what? are they about? I assume she's a criminal given the inspiration, but... Yeah, so, uh, the funny thing is that I had to be told this after the fact because it didn't come up in research, but there's, um... Like, someone from the Old West, Bell Star, I think her name was, that yeah. was an outlaw, so I feel... I feel like a goof that they did make into the actual video. Did you uh, know? Which I haven't watched it yet, so much to do it. I had no... I was like, oh, there's a wanted poster because these other sinful spoils that she already has, clearly she must have stolen them from someone. That's the only reason. Um, if it makes you so feel better, just... the only reason I know about Bellstar the criminal is because in Digimon, there is a Digimon called Bellstarmon, who is a demon 
uh, cowboy gun woman. So that's the only reason that I have then, at that point, I was like, what's to do with this Bellstar Mon? So I know about her from that, but other than that, I don't think I had that much Old West history locked up in here. And I never thought to question that, because I'm all like, oh, they gave Bielzamon uh, a sweet redesign. That's all I have to think about with this. <laughs> well, they certainly did. So she's oh, a yes. thief, and she's stolen the sinful spoils. They are her spoils, seemingly. I believe so. Uh, the reference art is clear that both, um, I believe it's, the names are like Lucia and Sylvia, are these kind of parasitic beings. They don't like, they're always on her. It, it makes a specific point where even when she's not in garb, they're still kind of like attached to her. So, uh, they kind of stick around. Mask, is it one of them? Like uh, her red mask? That's there's some weird presumption thing there because she can take the mask off but the eye goes green when she puts the mask on and another thing that the reference art points out is that anything that's green on her is supposed to be influenced or is one of the sinful spoils uh the little like wolf claw has is like the green tips the little bat one has ah. green tips <laughs> so like every once in a while her eye goes green and like the tips of her hair are like the two things i'm like looking out for they're gonna spring some weird stuff on us in a future set um but to what ends the mask factors into that right now we're not sure so we haven't seen so all this stuff's been quite self-contained so far it's it's bell start and then the sinful spoils that accompany her there isn't is there another archetype in that set that connects in the same way that some of the albaz and the visas ones connect or is it just them for now I don't think there's a direct connection between Dia Bellstar and Snake Eyes, uh, but both of them do connect through Sinful Spoils. So my guess is that Sinful Spoil is going to be like the main through line. Uh, there's going to be like a bunch of archetypes that have connections with Sinful Spoils. And then any new Dia Bellstars that we get in the future will also key into that main th through line. Interesting. And... I've not looked too heavily at the future sets. I know Age of Overlord is the next one. Is it the next one or is the one between? The next one that uh, come from Japan. Yeah, it was Duelist Nexus. And then the one where Dia Bellstar came out in, that one's Age of Overlord. And then we're getting Phantom Nightmare. So once we get our uh, cool art jets and all the U-Bell stuff, then we'll figure out what's going on with the next chapter of that. Have we seen all of Age of Overlord now? Uh, yes. Yeah, Age of Overlord is just out. And there's no, none of the next visa stuff? There's no sad visa? No, uh, we've got sad visas. We need, um, we need depression visas or something, don't we? Uh, yeah, we haven't seen, presumably we haven't seen the next emotion in the visas thing. Uh, there are some people who are saying that, like, Vita is another of the heart monsters, but in disguise, and that one's supposed to be discussed. And I he, don't he buy that gross, yet. He's but not as, yeah. He's a bit icky. Kinda. Gives me the ick. He's green. He's too. He's so green. Ooh, he looks stinky. I don't know. Why. It's all the fur. He doesn't wash that. Uh, that big clock thing on his back. It's true. It's true. It's time for the new game. <sighs> T set pass on T set pass. I have set one monster and one spell trap face down on my board. You have. Three yes-no questions, and a hint to guess it. There is a point system. I will be keeping score of who gets the most points, and we'll be finding out who the winner is at the end of the series. You'll get one point if you get the monster correct. You'll get one point if you get the spell trap correct. You'll get, uh, you'll lose a point. Well, there are three potential bonus points. You lose a bonus point for every question you ask. So if you ask no questions and get it, you'll get three points. If you ask one question, two questions, three questions, you'll get less bonus points. You will get two guesses for each card. So you can guess the monster twice and you can guess the spell trap twice. Um, you cannot guess the monster four times. Um, and you will lose a point for every incorrect guess. Does that all make sense to you? Hmm. I will be keeping score of the points, so you don't need to worry about adding up. I give you, I gave you a hint earlier for you to think about, and the hint is bouncy, 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 bouncy is the hint on this week's T set pass. Now, Nova, can you guess what cards I've set to create a bouncy, bouncy combination? Um. So when I saw that, I had two big ideas in mind. I kind of want to 
bank on one of the if I could if I can hit this out of the park that'd be very funny. Yeah. At the same time I don't want to just get, get fall flat on my points. face at the beginning. Hmm. Okay, so I I'll ask one question. Your first question to lose first one question. of your three potential bonus points. Two yes. on the table. What's your yes no questions at that? I may give more than a yes no, but you are not expecting any more than a yes no. If I get in the moment and carried away. I, I wouldn't dare. <laughs> um, is the monster a light attribute reptile type? No. Okay, that, that cuts out worms. Okay, I'm <laughs> glad I asked that because I was about to go full bore on uh, worm, worm Yagan W Nebula Meteorite, but that's not it. Okay. I will say that just because we are T setting doesn't necessarily mean that the monster has to be a flip monster. It just may be a monster that fits the hint. That's true, that's true. And and I'm glad you said that because now I'm thinking, oh wait, this could also be monsters that when they are fought against. It could they be anything. The, the only could thing be anything. is that it's bouncy bouncy is the hint. Okay. Alright, um, Okay, second question. Second question. One more bonus point off the table. If the monster is attacked, does it cause the attacking monster to return to the hand? Yes. Okay, that narrows it down. Okay. Hmm. Bouncy, bouncy. Bouncy, bouncy. So, I've got two in mind. I have. I don't even know what the what the back row is. Yeah. Be I, I will. I will clarify. Now, for this first episode, I have been generous, and I've said spell or trap. For the future, it may not always be a spell or a trap. It could be something that could be set in the spell trap, but it will never be something that is illegal to be in the spell trap. Okay, cool. We're not doing infernity rules. Got it. Well, yeah, I, I have been tempted to maybe do one one time, but no, like, uh, no. This will, this will be, for today's episode, it is a spell or a trap card. Okay. Um, all right. Third question. Hit me. No is bonus the points left on the table. Is the monster Earth attribute? Yes. Okay. All right. That's all your questions gone. You've got two guesses of the monster and two guesses of the spell trap. Okay. The monster. My first guess. Is it gonna be legendary jujitsu master? It's not legendary Jiu-Jitsu ah! Master, you have got one minus point. Oh Wait. dear, oh dear. What other Earth monster has that effect? Oh no! I thought you were gonna slam dunk it when you narrowed it down to Earth, there ain't that many. Oh no! Okay, okay. Okay, let's take a break from the monster. I need, I let's need leave some him space. be, let's leave him to rest. Leave him be, that's fine. Um, We've got a spell or a trap sitting here, right? back row there could be any number of back row that bounce cards back to the hand uh but i've got to go with the classic uh is the back row the normal trap card compulsory evacuation device it is the normal trap card compulsory evacuation device you have got one point bringing you up from your negative one to zero points okay you're on zero points you could leave today positive by getting one guess so if it's attacked, it does bounce. Now, I guess that wasn't technically ruling out flip monsters. I was not ruling out flip monster. I just don't want you not. to get flip pilled and get That's sadly true. burned if it were not to be a flip monster. Yeah. Now there are earth monsters that have a similar effect. Uh, Hyper Hammerhead can bounce if it attacks a monster, but not if it's being attacked. And there are monsters that retaliate with destruction that are Earth when they're attacked, like things like 3,000 Needles. But I don't know of any monster that's Earth that works exactly like Legendary Jiu-Jitsu Master. But there is a flip monster that would do it. And I'm banking it all on this one. Uh-oh, here we We're go. going back to the old school Yu-Gi-Oh! Is the set monster 
Honey, honey! It is not honey, honey. I'm so sorry. I feel awful. I tried to save you from the flip well because it is not a flip monster. And you were so close with when it is attacked by an opponent's monster, you do get to bounce. However, uh -huh. it's not the only one bouncing the opponent's monster because Neospatian Grandma bounces <laughs> both the opponent's monster and himself when he is attacked and when he is attacking. You are so right. Um, I guess I should have thought about the fact that it wouldn't trigger if it was set face down. It, I did try and warn you on that. Yeah, no, but there that's we go. True. But Very no, yeah, fun. that's on I'm me. Glad. Hey, that was cl clever move, Scumner. I appreciate it. Good move. The Discord server were asked, and a lot of them, Mabron and Max, both guessed Penguin. They, so I didn't give them any guesses. They just got the hint. And a lot of them guessed Penguin Soldier and Compulsory Evacuation Device. I did originally have Penguin Soldier, but I thought it would be too easy. So I swapped it out for Neospatial and Grand Mole fairly early on in my planning of these lists. Um, but yeah, no, thank you very much for playing the game. I'm, I'm glad that the, the, the three-question system helped at all. You were so close, and yet so far. And then, oh, it was so fun. Oh my gosh, that was great. Brilliant. So you, uh, you've just done Sinful Spoils. What, do you know what's coming next? Do you have any hints about secret upcoming... Of, of, which will probably be out by the time that I release this podcast. But anyway, what's, what's next on the docket? Fingers crossed. Um, so the thing that I learned about Snake Eyes is that that whole thing is based on, I think I think I said it was Lithuanian, hmm. a tale of Egil the River Snake Queen, uh, which I'd never heard of before. Uh, and I don't think uh, Lithuanian culture and lore has ever been used in Yu-Gi-Oh! So my idea is that we're either going to lean more into stuff from that culture, or each sinful spoil is going to find itself as, like, a uh, retelling of some other fable or tale that uh, we haven't seen in Yu-Gi-Oh! before, which I think would be really cool. A really great way to incorporate a lot of different story elements. Yeah. Um, Do you think... Are you excited? Are you excited? We've got a brand new lore chapter, you know what I mean? Like, as Albaz is not closing, we've got more stuff probably to come, but, like, it's the the, the focus on Albaz is drawing the end, and Visus is sort of in the middle heyday, if not nearer the end. Um, so, we've got this whole new chapter opening up. That could be an entirely different culture base. Albaz is very Western, um, whereas, it, is it Hindu mythology? or Yeah. Or, yeah, and Hindu mythology for Visus. We've got a whole Lithuanian culture now for Snake Eyes, which will then tie into Bellstar maybe more exciting it's it's kind of bittersweet because now that we're a ways through the visas lore um i can't say that anything about it has developed characters to get attached to hmm. like albaz got to this point where we had uh the kit crew her and all the spring games had like their own personalities uh albaz had his hero's journey going on uh and we all joke about how much luber's just a funny little guy you just a little guy. goofy goober um but i can't say that about the visa stuff no um visa goes from one planet to another the only characters that we get are like the heart monsters and half of them either die or go comatose before we even get a full character out of them and they look, uh, and they all look like him, and they they're fairly similar to each other in terms of like they're all horrible, like they're all evil. Um, yeah. So it's like, other than Mr. Manadium, but um, I did, and I think I can't remember if I if I ended up leaving it in last time we spoke, but it, you take a risk when you do a multiverse thing, especially when every character is the main character, because if you do not like Visus, you are not going to like the other ones probably you know in, in the same way you know in a show like rick and morty where 99 there's like 17 different ricks on the screen at the same time if you don't like rick you're probably not gonna like rick and morty because he is not only one main character he is about 20 of the main characters in various episodes and you, you are betting on people liking it and if you fail that bet you have killed your show and that is so funny, because the fact that it's a multiverse should mean that we have all these distinct Ricks, these distinct Vesuses in lore. But so many times it ends up being just another version of Rick, but slightly to the left. Uh, or it's the butt of a joke, in which case it's just an extension of the character's worldview that we don't like already. So, yeah. Vesus, I don't know if it falls directly into that line, but we haven't developed their characters enough to really know if that's the case. 
Uh, you can really only say like rise heart, a uh, asshole, rhino heart, a uh, jerk, a slave. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Rykart, kind of like a little tussle. Like, he's up for a tussle, but, like, that's all we know about him. Least them. bad of all of the bad guys. Uh, yeah, least. Because he enslaved animals instead of sentient people. Like, that's, so that's, like, the low bar that he hit. Rykart, Rykart's only education was one copy of Pokemon Yellow and was like, I'm just training them! <laughs> What's the deal? It gets so much funny when you remember the fact they've all got those nasty muzzles on and like those like sewn on like <laughs> Pikachu wouldn't do what I said, so I put a cage on his face. Like, oh no. Um Uh only losers don't put items on their Pokemon, okay? I'm competitive. It's a choice muzzle. It can do one attack, the one <laughs> I tell it to do. No Excellent. sound attacks, no no speaking here. Um yeah, so, yeah, I assume what you mean. I, I almost wonder, I, when I, when, it, when Bellstar got revealed, I'm like, are they giving up on visas? Are they sort of just, have they just like sort of gone, you know what, people don't like it, we're gonna do something new, I don't know, like, it's, it, they gave Brandon a lot more space to breathe before they brought in visas. Like, we had like a year and a bit, didn't we? Like, it, was, it felt like ages before visas came along. And Bellstar's coming very quick. Yeah, we're, we are kind of seeing, like, the same cycle, right? Mm -hmm. Like, Albaz had a whole year, we finished out part one, and then they started telling two stories at the same time. So we had part two of Albaz, we had part one of Visas. And then part one of Visas kind of lasted for, like, the rest of Albaz. Mm -hmm. Stopped that. And then now we have part two of Visas, and now we're doing the Dia Bellstar stuff in parallel to that. Um... So that seems just like they're operating as normal, honestly. Um, but I think the reason why it feels like it's come on too fast is because we just aren't really connected with the Visas people, right? No. Like, well, you say the Visas people. Who are the people? Like, who, what, what characters are there? On the first planet, it's just dogs and men. It's just those two boys punching each other surrounded by dogs. Okay, fair. Next planet, Kaleido Hearts may be a character. She seems pretty chill. The other mermaids, you know there. And then, and then after that, he's just punching a rice heart for 20 hours. And like, yeah, yeah. And it's like, where are the characters? Well, he goes to the Mana Dome world. What has he got? Balls. There's just balls everywhere. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, they don't give themselves a lot of opportunity to make this diverse cast of characters that like someone will get attached to. Um, you know, say what you will about how convoluted the branded lore is. At least it gives us like these technically like not very fleshed out but these different places and cultures with various characters that you might get attached to you know uh raise your hand if you've been on a stream and someone did the mo yi copy pasta <laughs> mo yi has no character no and still people get attached to her enough to make memes about it i love that there's it, nothing like that in beast the slight hint of looking a bit like a woman has been enough to give mo yi an entire entire lease of life she's not even a humanoid like but she's that that just enough to get it by for the for the sake of the, uh, but no, like I 100% agree that. And I you just think back, it's like who do you like out of Visa's law? And my answer is, uh, scare uh, Lightheart because it's the only one that has any kind of personality in the card. You see him. We're still on the right shoulder. for that. Mm -hmm. But like, who else can you relate to? I and I was thinking this, if they'd Funko popped everybody and they were all Funko popped in the R. You know, you see, like, maybe, um, oh, God, oh, what's, uh, water one? Uh, Rhino. Rhino. You see Rhino Heart maybe looking smug on the shoulder, and then Light Heart's looking all, like, manic, because he's a crazy little, you know what I mean? Like, something, some emotion. And I look at the art, and the art is beautiful, and it's all awesome, and it's, like, this amazing, consistent art style. But it's just a lot of people punching each other. All these arts, it's just, like, somebody getting attacked, or stabbed in the back, or punched. And I got, I'm getting really annoyed. The only, like, the, the Scareclaw uh, planet one, that's kind of cool. You can see most of the planet. And then the Tyr Element planet, you get a lovely shot of, like, the, the world rings. And you go, okay, that's what it looks like. That's the planet. You look at the Kishitira one, it's just two people having a fight. That's not a field spell. That should be a trap art. I want to see the planet. Like, You're so right for this. You're yeah. so real for this. I, I hate... The Kestira, because I was looking at it, because I'm thinking about adding Kestira to my tier build. 
I don't really want to, but I think I will. But um, I was just looking at the field spells, like, what is the planet here? What does it look like? I can't tell because all I can see is is uh, Ryza and and um, Visus getting ready to punch each other. Like, I can't see anything behind them. They're filling the arc. Yeah, the closest thing that you get are all of those um, Eastern-style buildings with pipes coming out of them, but those are those are buildings. That's not a world. No. And, they're like, yeah, that literally, the background of the level four is the most you get of that world entirely and that's not yeah. what should be happening you should be and they clearly know that because they did it once they did it for the tier world i can see what that one looks like like <laughs> it's it is an evocative iconic look yeah i am never going to forget pel reno because it's a weird pizza world it's a weird pizza world made of water that's sick and you get how the mermaids you imagine they probably just jump down and then they'd swim up the, the middle chain like yeah yeah, no. And and the funny thing is that they had a second chance with this because the Manadiums have a little version of their world in there. Mm. What did Torrid do? It's just another house. Yeah. Come on. Just need to see what it what, what's the weather like? Is it rainy? Like I don't know. We do not know. Well, I, well, w wish I could tell you, but not even the lore master. I'm stumped. You're stumped.